Thank you. I yield myself as much time as I require. I rise today to lend a voice to the people of Syria, many of whom have been silenced by a cruel and oppressive dictator. This very moment, 5,500 miles from this chamber in the country of Syria, innocent people are suffering under a regime bent on crushing freedom. I met recently with a group of Syrian Americans in Charleston, West Virginia, my congressional district, and many of them have family members and loved ones in Syria. The stories I heard are alarming. Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad is waging an all-out war against his own people with one goal in mind, to muzzle any voice that speaks out in opposition to his regime. And people are suffering. Four out of five Syrians live in poverty. More than 200,000 people have been killed. One million have been wounded and more than three million Syrians have fled the country. Assad has shown that he will use any means necessary to maintain his dictatorship. He's rained down chemical weapons from the sky onto neighborhoods. He's dropped cluster bombs and barrel bombs into residential buildings occupied by women and children. He's placed entire communities under siege, starving peaceful residents into submission. He's even bombed hospitals full of people recovering from his attacks. I would now like to share a few stories that I've heard from my constituents with whom I met just this previous day. First, Dana Ashbani Shama has family that lives in Syria. Several of her cousins were brutally killed by the Assad regime. One summer night in 2013, gunfire rang out in the streets of the neighborhood in which Dana's cousin lived. Fearing for her life, she grabbed her husband and their three young children and rushed toward a nearby basement for safety. But they were met by Assad's thugs and mercilessly gunned down, their bodies mutilated beyond recognition. Dr. Ragda Salul is an endocrinologist in Charleston. Her sister Dahlia lives in Syria with her husband and their two children, Shahid and Omar, aged 7 and 11. Their town fell under siege by the Assad military in 2013. The residents are running low on food and are surviving on a diet of dry noodles, and if they're lucky, vegetables that they grow on their rooftops and balconies. Without electricity, they've stripped their streets bare of trees, trying to keep themselves warm on cold nights. No one even wants to think about next winter. Recently, a foreign humanitarian organization dropped relief materials for the town, and Dahlia's husband set up a marketplace in his home to facilitate the bartering of goods. But it didn't last long. The Assad regime bombed their home, destroying their little market and killing three people. Dr. Khalid was an orthopedic surgeon in Aleppo before the conflict in Syria began, but was forced to flee to Idlib as he was targeted by the government. In Idlib, he worked in several field hospitals and witnessed numerous aerial attacks. One of these attacks occurred on a new orthopedic center on the day of its opening in March of 2013. The missile struck the hospital, killing one patient, injuring several people, and forcing the facility to shut down. In June of 2012, government forces entered Duma, a suburb of Damascus, and ordered everyone out of their apartments. Citizens were lined up and told to face the wall. Madison, an 11-month-old baby at the time, was held by his mother with his father and 10-year-old sister, Fatima, by her side. Fatima asked the soldiers to spare the life of her baby brother, offering $2, all the money she had in her pocket. The soldiers shot anyway, and Fatima's father was shot 
as he was shot, he fell onto Fatima, protecting her from the bullets. One bullet went through Madison and killed their mother. At a family of 25, only four survived. These are just a few of the stories that I've heard, but they should be a call to action. The commander-in-chief of our powerful military, President Obama, appropriately recognized the severity of the situation in Syria, drawing a red line at chemical weapons. But Assad has crossed that red line repeatedly with impunity, and the president has failed to rise to the challenge. According to press reports, Assad regime launched another chemical weapon on the Syrian people just this past week. We need leadership from the president in the face of grave human rights violations in Syria, not faux red lines and empty threats. President Obama is not providing that leadership, and people in Syria are suffering because of it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I yield back.